All right, so after aldolase uh, has split open our fructose 1,6-bisphosphate, we end up with two products that are similar and are actually isomers of one another. You can tell they're isomers because they have the same molecular formula but two different functional groups, uh, an aldehyde here versus a ketone here. And now get glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate gap uh, is able to go on with glycolysis, but DHAP essentially is a waste product. Uh, and so to avoid half of our carbons being wasted, we need an enzyme that can convert them back and forth between each other. And that's what this enzyme triose phosphate isomerase does. So I'm going to get into the mechanism. All right, so we're going to start with our dihydroxyacetone phosphate. And remember that our goal here is to convert it into a glyceraldehyde. So we need to make this ketone go away, and we need to make this oxygen into the aldehyde. Okay, Just like we saw with the uh, glucose phosphate isomerase, uh, we need to do an ene diol intermediate. So this is pretty simple. It's going to involve a glutamic acid residue, and specifically it is glutamate 165, and it's going to involve the histidine 95, which is going to act as an acid. So what we need to do here is we're trying to, if you look at this thing, if we're trying to make a double bond here, we're going to break an octet. So the first thing we need to really do is to generate our ene diol by pulling a hydrogen here. So that's the first step of our reaction. Boom. Now that's going to in initially kind of be back absorbed by this carbon, but because it's alpha to this carbonyl, it's going to move over to give oxygen a charge. So our next push is going to be like this, and it's going to result in oxygen getting a charge. And luckily, it's right next to this proton here. So we're going to end up with our ene diol. Cool. So there's our ene diol intermediate. Now, in order to get us farther along, we are going to need to pull this hydrogen and protonate here at the uh, carbon. Right? And so we need to put a hydrogen here and take it off here. So let's switch to the next page. Okay, so I'm going to redraw it as our ene dial. And remember, we have a glutamic acid from last time, and we have our histidine. And our glutamic acid, 165. So again, we're trying to form a double bond here. Now we can do that because we can make a bond break a bond. Um, but there's nowhere for this to develop charge unless it gets protonated right away because carbon ions are not favorable. Oxygen already has an octet. There's nowhere for this bond to go. So if we're going to push this with an electron pull, pull this hydrogen off, the bond electrons are going to go down to form our carbonyl for the glyceraldehyde. And then this guy is initially going to kind of pop onto this carbon but it's incredibly basic to do that, and so instead it's going to deprotonate our glutamic acid. So that's going to get us to where we want to be, our glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. So we can release that guy. And notice also that our glutamate and our uh, histidine are back in their original charge state and ready to go again for round two.